You're listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self-liberation, old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now, your hosts, Shane and Jason. Hey guys, Shane here. Thank you for tuning in to the Vonu Podcast. This podcast is covered by Bipcot, no government license, so has reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. Uh, learn more by visiting bipcot.org. So real quick, uh, we've got another book out under Liberty Under Attack Publications. Uh, it's titled Vonu, The Search for Personal Freedom, Part 2, Letters from Rayo. In this special publication, we learn more about the main proponent of Vonu. Uh, you'll read articles and letters discussing his pursuance of van nomadism and wilderness Vonu. Uh, Vanu Week, Pedestrian Nomadism, Some Obscure Libertarian History, and even Jim Stum's Experience Meeting Rayo in Fall of 1971. Go pick it up on Amazon or on the site, libertyunderattack.com, Bitcoin Accepted and Preferred. I'm joined by J. Daniel Richer, uh, someone who I just recently connected with on Twitter. Uh, his new project is Undermine News, uh, News and Opinions on Political Strategy and the Art of Undermining Power Structures. Uh, so, yeah, sounds great, uh, especially to anyone listening to this podcast. But uh, he's also a Praxis graduate, uh, if that's what uh, it's called. We'll get we'll learn more about that. I really don't know much about Praxis. Uh, he's also uh, interested in Second Realms, and uh, he's a listener to this podcast. So without further ado, Jay Daniel, it's a pleasure to be, uh, to be speaking with you. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. Uh, thanks for having me on. Hey, not a problem, not a problem at all. So uh, why don't you start? Uh, uh, you might be a, a you know a new voice to my listeners. Uh, so why don't you start by uh, providing a brief introduction? Uh, who are you, and uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm uh, Jay Daniel Richard, and I built um, a new journalistic platform for myself, basically, but uh, other people can contribute. And it's focused on uh, like open source uh, journalism, mostly reporting on things in the political strategy realm. Uh, mostly um, non-state related things like uh, we didn't really touch on voting but um, I also uh, written articles for like uh, Foundation for Economic Education uh, Reclaim the Net which is a uh, I don't think it's new but they, they report on um, like uh, censorship spans and stuff like that on the internet and it's really mm -hmm. cool Okay, nice, nice. And I, I thought I remembered something about that uh, in your Twitter profile, in your uh, Twitter, uh, I guess, bio. Um, so you uh, contributed articles yeah. to me then? Yes. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So uh, did, did, you, did you intern there or any, or uh, I guess, what did you do for them? Just contribute? Oh, uh, yeah, just, con just contrib contribute. Okay. Very cool, very cool. So um, I guess uh, um, I always like to, to kind of ask this question, especially with uh, with your interesting background, or I guess uh, what I what I do know from from your uh, I guess your uh, path here. Um, why don't you Why don't you tell us your story? I mean, how did you uh, you know get into the political world? Uh, how did you become familiar with anarchism, second realms, uh, Vanu, etc.? Can you kind of kind of uh, walk us through that path? Okay, so uh, I'm Gen Z, so I think a lot of like uh, Gen Z people kind of woke up. Uh, during like the, the 2016 election with uh, Donald Trump and stuff like that, and um, I I actually thought that there, there was only two parties, like uh, Democrats and Republicans. I thought that that was it, and there's just like a uh, this weird group of woke centrists that existed on the internet. So uh, I was in like uh, maybe seventh, yeah, seventh grade. No, 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 not seventh grade. Yeah, seventh grade. And um, yeah, junior. And they were having this uh, this uh, mock election kind of thing at high school. And um, the senior class, because I was in this, I was in this uh, this math class with uh, seniors, because it was a, an easy class that they just needed to get the credits to, to just go on. And they they were all very pro Bernie. So naturally, like I I was kind of. I didn't really know what to think. I didn't really like mess with politics at the time. I was like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the the results of the election, which is where uh, only seniors voted, was that uh, well, Bernie won. Then it was uh, Hillary. Then it was Trump. 
And then it was just a guy named Gary Johnson. So I was like, hold up, hold up. Because I was like, who is this guy? So I haven't heard of his name, like, ever. So, yeah, I figured I found, like, the Libertarian Party through that. And, like, when I find something that I didn't know existed, I kind of obsess over it. It might be, like, the uh, <laughs> like the hyper-focus part of uh, ADHD, which I have. Well, technically, it's more ADD now. But, um, yeah, kind of, like, a hyper-focused on this, this realm of politics that I did not understand. So I looked up the Libertarian Party, like, the platform, scrolled through their uh, uh, principles, and I got, I didn't really need any convincing. Like I, I instantly, I just loved it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, like I just, I just connected, connected with, uh, their principles. And then from that, I kind of, I kind of became a, an Austin Peterson supporter. <laughs> okay, okay. Who definitely, sh definitely should have beat out, uh, Gary Johnson for that for, in the Libertarian Party. Uh, and that's when I kind of was like, the Libertarian Party is kind of a joke. And there's also those uh, the videos of the Libertarian Party where uh, there's that guy stripping and yeah. like uh, a whole other bunch of ridiculous stuff. So yeah, I kind of started disassociating myself from the Libertarian Party. Okay. But I was still like minarchist at the time ish. And uh, I also also was in uh, like these, I guess you could call them uh, like. I guess a smuggler would call them digital chases, mm -hmm. where uh, I was just in with like a bunch of anarchists and minarchists and just libertarian, liberty minded people because uh, that's how I figured stuff out and learned about politics, mm -hmm. just just from the internet and like memes and stuff like that. And from from there, I had this uh, this friend who I actually met in real life because uh, I, I met uh, we connected um, on this app that's now not it's not on the app store anymore. But we uh, added each other on Telegram. He's he's an egoist currently, but he could he convinced me to convert from like minarchism to uh, ancapism, basically. Right. But it took a bit. It took a bit for me to get there. And uh, the argument that he used was that you know the state's always going to get bigger, and I was like, that's true. So I I was like, all right, bye bye minarchism, because like <laughs> I'm, I'm like a pretty rational person. Like if something something makes sense to me, I'll just go with it. But I had a difficult time really uh, like getting my mind in like the end cap mindset because uh, th there's there's like a certain amount of like humans humans want to kind of be accepted by other people on some level some level like even men even though we tend to be like more we're okay with being being like a like a loner I guess you could say mm -hmm. yeah I just couldn't I was like well if I if I say I'm an anarchist then everyone will laugh at me you know stuff like that. So yeah, it took me it took me a while to get there, but you know, eventually I did, and then I sat in that for like a like a, a year and a half, just debating people online like all libertarians do. <laughs> right. Yeah. And um, and it, it it just got into the theoretical every single time, and it, like after a while, I was like, no, I'm done, I'm done. And then I recalled this video from Anarchast. I don't know if you're familiar with that YouTube channel, but mm -hmm. it's uh, by a uh, Jeff Burrick who runs uh, Anarcho Poco. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a video. I think it's from like 2004 or something, and it's Smuggler. <laughs> yep, yep, I've and, seen um, that one. Yeah, and he's he's like has his mask on. I'm like, oh, I got I got to watch this video. So yeah, I watched that video, and I was like, hmm. And I it just like sat in the back of my mind, and then I just kept doing like uh, the whole ANCAP thing. And then I don't I don't know what happened, but I ended st stumbling upon the no no. My my other friend from Telegram, um, he told me like that I'm a crypto anarchist, and I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> so I kind of had to like look that up, and then I found like uh, the Tim Timothy May thing and all that, and then I stumbled upon the the crypto anarchy 101 video by Smuggler, and I was like, I am sold, yeah, sold. <laughs> yeah. But an interesting thing about that is that I kind of disagree with Smuggler when he says that it's unethical. To, to change the system on people who don't want the system to be changed because that just doesn't make any sense to me. Really? I don't th I don't think it's unethical. I, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it doesn't. It's not, I don't think it's unethical to change it. I just think it's the best strategy to use crypto anarchy to get what you want. But like uh like uh, for example slavery. I don't think it would be wrong to abolish 
slavery forcibly from people he wanted to like enslave black people or whatever because like that's just wrong you can't do that sorry i just i can't see why someone would just look at slavery and be like you know what we need to create an alternate reality to slavery like no we're not doing that we're not but yeah okay yeah i, I see that's your how yeah I, I see your argument yes yeah, yeah. I, I see your argument yeah um I suppose, obviously, obviously, for the really grotesque things, for the for the real, you know, like uh, like uh, you know, human rights violations, as 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 they would say, yeah. um, like obviously for those things, um, if you can get rid of the evil, obviously get rid of the damn evil, right? Get rid of the cancer. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, I, I think I think what like from from I guess the the way that smuggler approaches it, the people I, I guess the, a large majority of people have consented to, to such a system, right? Um, or else it wouldn't exist. Yes. Uh, some people want it. Uh, you know, most people have their reason for wanting such a system to exist. Um, so. If it's um yep. uh, so <clears throat> i see your point and i see his um but i i i, I guess the the reason that i'm that i'm okay that uh like I, i'm okay with that seeing both sides is that um <clears throat> i don't know i like the idea of keeping the first realm and the second realm separate um i really yeah i, I really yeah. do keeping them two two separate things um, so i guess uh the the, ne the next introductory question i'll ask you is um uh, what do you, what do you think of honor as a freedom strategy? Because I, I know you mentioned that uh, you know you're a listener to the podcast. Uh, how how did you find it? And what do you what do you think from uh, from listening to it? Um, I've only really listened to like the like the the Ivan one really, so I'm not entirely sure what what Vano oh, is. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, uh, I'll give you the, the 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 brief rundown real quick. Um, it's a it's an so Vanu is an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable, um, and it's premised around becoming as invulnerable to coercion as humanly possible from both public coercers, governments, and private coercers, uh, just violators of person and property. So um, this is done by way yeah. of uh, by way of lifestyle changes. Um, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know, in the in the uh, when I was plugging the the new book, um, Ray started out, started out as a van nomad. Um, so he, uh, you know, lived in a van, traveled around, um, didn't have uh, to pay property tax, didn't have to worry about nuisance abatements, um, those sorts of things. So the mobility made him more invulnerable to coercion. Um, then he, you know, went pretty radical with his with his his version of Vanu and pursued wilderness Vanu. He lived in a, a polyethylene a tent, just a tent out in the middle of a national forest, uh, which yeah, most people won't do. Um, but other strategies like uh, minimal sailboating, intentional communities, uh, second realms, crypto anarchism, um, very uh, basically just. Uh, uh, tools and strategies to make one more invulnerable to coercion um and that's why like I, i'm i'm kind of seeing it now um from like my interview with smuggler and people becoming introduced to vani like from the cypherpunk kind of second realm um perspective um they dig it because that's what they're that's what they're doing right they're trying to become invulnerable to coercion they're not trying to change it or get rid of the coercion mm -hmm. they're just trying to become invulnerable to it by um having uh, by you know utilizing crypto anarchism so that's kind of the uh the, the rough the rough general idea all right. Sounds like a really good strategy, but I don't know if I could, you know, uh, do like the extreme routes of that. But... Sure. Oh, yeah. 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 And like I said, there's there's a there's obviously there's uh, there's no uh, end to the strategies. Those are just kind of the ones that um, I guess the some of the uh, the main the main ones that people utilize and also things like perpetual traveling and uh, off grid homesteading, too. But um, anyway, I guess let's let's go ahead and uh, get into here. Um, cause I have never talked to anyone that, uh, has, has, uh, you know, been through the Praxis program. So I guess uh, let's, let's, uh, start with, uh, um, for those like me who are new to it, uh, what is, what is Praxis? Okay. So Praxis Lick is a 12 month entrepreneurial boot camp that focuses on, um, um, like pra like, uh, learning theory and then applying it instead of just learning theory, learning theory, learning theory, learning theory, which is basically what, uh, the traditional schools or colleges basically do. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, in the program you learn, uh, you learn like basic web development, um, personal branding, uh, like sales, marketing, stuff like that. You basically figure out what you're good at. And then they, then, uh, after six months, you get paired up with one of their business partners and you get paid $15 an hour. And then, after that, there's like a 97% chance that you get hired by them or something like that. Really? Yeah. 
Very cool. Very cool. So, so I guess, um, and I guess you, you already kind of alluded to this question, but um, I guess how, how does it differ from, I mean, so it sounds like uh, you, you went to public schooling up through, up through high school and then uh, you went to the Praxis program, um, I'm guessing to, uh, guessing or replace college. So how, how does it differ from, how would Praxis differ from like say college or, or, or uh, you know, public schooling? Okay, so first of all, I'm not like a Praxis graduate. I'm a, I guess you call it Praxis uh, participant. Uh, I haven't actually started yet. I'm in a pre-program. So I just oh, okay. I just got into it uh, today, but I, I start I start in August. But I've been uh, following uh, like the the Praxis brand, I guess you could call it, for like about two years. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so how's it different from college? So I was in college i have no idea how long but it feels like i felt like a very short amount of time i was in a community college and um i was in this one class literature yeah and i thought it was going to be all shakespearean and whatnot but it was not it was feminist marxist literature and i needed mm. to get out of there wow <laughs> yeah so i guess one thing is uh i think maybe college classes are a bit deceiving in in like the, they don't explain like what you're getting into and stuff like that and they're they're more focused on uh lectures um uh right uh writing uh, homework assignments stuff like that whereas praxis is more oh, like uh, oh, we suggest you do this because this has worked with our previous graduates and got them all these business all these uh connections and business stuff and we think it's going to be really beneficial for you because of X, Y, and Z. And then you just go do it. And like, they'll teach you like theory and then you just like apply it. And then like, you have this, you basically just build this, uh, I guess you could call it box of stuff that you, that you built and you can show it to people like, uh, employers and stuff like that. I think that, um, they're also involved with this thing called crash. Mm -hmm. which is more focused on people already on the job market and they just they just launched their um their crash profile on product hunt recently and it's supposed to be like a replacement for a or not not a replacement i guess you call it an alternative for a resume and it features stuff like a like a, a core link personal website facebook twitter um maybe github and then you can make video like uh what's it called like a pitch they call them a pitch deck where mm -hmm. you where you basically uh pick a company and you basically try to, sh to show them that you can create value through through your video and stuff like that and there's also like a tech stack where and these things this is actually cool because it's not like just saying oh yeah i know git i know uh c plus or whatever because you it says uh like prove it and then it, you'll click on it and it'll send you to like something that they built like actually built so there's actual mm -hmm. proof that they, that an employer can just right. click on and instantly see that you're not like lying or whatever so it's it's just more fo focused on value creation than just shoving like a resume in someone's face like oh this is where i went gotcha Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I, uh, I went to college. Um, I got my associate's degree. It took me, it took me a little longer cause I started and stopped and started and stopped, but, um, I got my, you know, magic piece paper, the associate's degree in, and, uh, you were, you were kinder than, than I was whenever, cause I, I have an entire series on the, on the, at libertyintertack.com, like called adventures in Illinois higher education. And I just call it communist propaganda. Um, now like it just <laughs> it make, makes it, makes it easier than trying to, trying to, uh, you know, explain everything. But, um, yeah, it's, it sounds like a really, really, uh, interesting program. I wish it was around when I was uh you know looking for something like that um and uh so i guess <clears throat> you you haven't started yet um so i guess it, some of these questions might not be be possible maybe you've heard from other people but um what does a, a a normal day um look like um like obviously college you're going to lectures you're um you know doing finals and tests and shit um what would a normal day at, at praxis look like um would it be structured similarly i i'm not quite sure but I know they have like this the Slack group, and then uh, they're for a uh, pre-program they have these things called deliverables, which you're, you're, you like basically start before you start. So um, uh, you're supposed to get like a professional headshot, uh, a decent LinkedIn profile, uh, a personal a personal blog. Um, what else? 
uh, there's a, there's a couple other things, and and that's just like to start you off so that you have like a, a digital paper trail. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't know what like a typical. I think it would be different for everyone. I know that they have like this thing called Praxis Wednesdays where they get they invite like a uh, like people on that are you know I guess gurus in like personal branding or mm-hmm. like marketing and they you get to ask them questions and stuff like that. I haven't I haven't gone to one yet because right. uh, <laughs> work and stuff, but yeah, I'm not quite sure for that. Okay, gotcha. And, and it sounds like it, and, and and I like this because obviously with college, um, like especially like I have a hard time, I have a hard time understanding how mar- learning marketing in college, um, <clears throat> really does that much for mm-hmm. you in this you know very fast paced you know changing marketing world, um, but uh, like like for. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like a lot of the stuff they teach they, they, they teach you in college is outdated, and um, they don't teach like they don't have you um, at least. Uh, and I was a journalism, um, I was a journalism um, major at the start, so you'd think they would have you like start mm-hmm. writing and start a blog and start you know doing journalism on the side, but no, they'd have you do like your three major projects of the year, which is just three articles. Um, and then they just kind of shove you on out the door. Um, they didn't like it. So they, they, yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, but it sounds like with Praxis, they're actually trying to prepare you, like to prepare you for, to, you know, to be an entrepreneur, to, um, you know, start a business, um, by getting your digital, um, you know, portfolio, uh, set up. So that's, that's really, really great to hear. And that's not what they're getting in college. Um, definitely not. <laughs> so. <clears throat> All right, very good. Um, I guess uh, is there anything else you want to mention regarding Praxis, or uh, you want to move on and to start talking about uh, your new project? My new project. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. So you've been uh, you've been busy working uh, working on uh, putting something together. Why don't you uh, tell us about it? All right. So uh, on May twenty fourth, I launched my new my uh, new platform called Under My News, which, and. Um, it's it's focused on political strategy and like the art of undermining power structures so like uh governments corporations maybe like media but um it's 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 kind of niche but it's it's also very broad because i can like report on like 3d printed guns or i could report on like the the epi pencil which was made by this i want to say Maybe he's like an anacom, but um, he's focused on uh, making cheap, making medicine cheaper for for the masses. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm just trying to. It's it's basically a platform where I'm trying to figure out and show people what the best strategies are for whatever form of activism they want to do for whatever political beliefs that they have. Okay. Very good, very good, and this this would be considered self liberational media, and I'm really happy to uh, happy to see that, and that's why I wanted to have you on because we we did an episode, might have been season two. Um, Rayo talked about in the 1960s and 70s about the importance of self self liberational media, like not uh, you know just commenting on the news cycle, not just uh, you know um, covering the the 2016 election or something like that. Um, it's media that tells people how to do something that will make them more free. Um, so like anytime someone has like a self self liberational media platform, I always make a, make it a point to interview them. Um, but yeah, for the listeners, if you uh, if you go to undermine.news, I mean you'll see a, a lot of a uh, lot of cool stuff. Um, you've got some interviews on here, which I want to I want to I I guess uh, just meant just uh, talk about just just briefly, um, but um, yeah. So some things you might see: meet the man doing open source community building. Um, I like the I like the sound of that. Um, meet Tusk, the payment processing blockchain for the gun industry. Um, some stuff on privacy. Uh, Tor launch a stable browser app for Android. Um, just a lot of uh, you know a lot of stuff that we've talked about on this podcast, um, and uh, basically a, a new site focused on uh, on that sort of thing. So I I, I think it's uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, so. Uh, you've got your news and interview sections. Are you are you thinking about starting a podcast or anything like that for it? Um, maybe in the future, but I, I'm not quite sure. I think I want to stick with uh, just writing for now. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, so uh, I guess what's uh, um, you you've got everything up and functional. You're you're writing articles. Uh, what's uh, what's on the roadmap? Uh, what are you what are you gonna be working on over the over the coming uh, you know days and months? Uh, definitely uh, content. Um, my, uh, 
just trying to get like the word out, I guess, and um, trying to find uh, some left wing people to interview because I don't want to make my site look too biased. Like uh, we only like interview right wingers or something like that, but left wingers who are doing something. Um, I, I guess you call it like uh, what, what Cody Wilson said, uh, real politics are actually like uh, doing what you're speaking about or making something instead of just voting or whatever, something like that. Try to look for someone who 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 is that mm -hmm. that's left wing or like Ancom. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that the closest thing I can think of um, is uh, I interviewed uh, like a kind of a, maybe a social. I guess he'd be kind of a socialist type. He's a van nomad from Australia, an off grid van nomad. Um, that's the uh, the closest the closest thing I've found. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. I was making sure my my internet wasn't cutting out. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, that'd be the closest the, the 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 closest thing. Although I don't know if you're interested in van nomads. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds great, man, but uh, I do see it says, like, uh, open source strategy. I mean, is there, are there ways for, uh, you said you're looking for, uh, for uh, you know, um, um, maybe uh, looking for contributors. Uh, is there a way that people can get involved in, uh, in what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I'm planning on making a more, like, comprehensive way that you can contribute, like, uh, in Markdown. But um, it's, it's, the open source political strategy is, like, I guess you'd call it a project of um, Undermine News, because because uh, I don't really like to do things that other people have done or, you know, stay in like one place, kind of uh, ADHD with it. But um, it's 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 a place where people can, you know, contribute um, like what like strategies. So for my, the first uh, commit that I have on there is is focused on on a. Uh, like against gun control, but it's under 3D printing guns. So I have stuff on there. Uh, I have like SWOT analysis, so strengths, weaknesses, um, opportunities, uh, threats, and uh, a few other things on there like history, uh, description, uh, death counter, <laughs> and and then I'm gonna keep just keep expanding upon it until uh, you know I'm all out of that, and then I'll start like a different topic or like a like a like a more left wing uh, strategy, and then I'll add that to that. And just try to get people to contribute and contribute their ideas so that we have like this one space where pretty much every activist knows what to do. And it's like a fair fight, I guess you could call it. Right, right. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so I guess uh, from uh, from from what you've uh, from what you've researched and looked into, what are what are your uh, what are your uh, favorite strategies? Is there anything you're uh, you're interested in doing yourself? Um. Hmm. I do like the, the 3D printed gun space, but uh, not going to be doing that uh, anytime soon. Although uh, my friend is interested in that. Um, I I just like a just crypto anarchy, but I just basically do the, just the digital tabs. I don't really I don't really do much, at least not yet. Uh, maybe in the future, I just like reporting on it because I, I I just like the the strategy aspect of anarchy or basically anything that does not involve the state. It doesn't have to be anarchy specific. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just like all the data in one spot so that I can, I can actually know which, what's the best thing to do to solve X problem or the most impact I can have. So I don't want to be like twiddling my thumbs doing something stupid if there's a better way. Right. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. That's, uh, that's, that's, Kind of the kind of the goal of this podcast as well. So um, yeah, sounds like we've got uh, you know similar similar goals and uh, I guess uh, aspirations and and obviously uh, I, I obviously I, I I would presume the the end goal would actually actually be to find freedom with these strategies, right? Oh yes, yes. Very. good. I mean, I'll probably have some some uh, authoritarian strategies on there to keep it non biased, but yes. Very good, very good. Have you ever looked into uh, Jim Bell's assassination politics? Uh. I've I've heard about it. I think I've I've read some of it, and I've heard Smuggler talk about it and kind of diss it. <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. That's uh, that's that's definitely uh, that's definitely an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, it is a scary thought. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't think it's completely ethical. Right. Right. 
Gotcha. Okay. Very good. I was I was just curious. I was just curious. Um, but uh, I guess uh, I don't uh, I don't have any any uh, any other questions for you. Do you have any uh, any uh, closing thoughts for the listeners uh, regarding uh, Undermine News, uh, what you're doing, uh, uh, or anything like that? Uh, yes. Um, voting is slacktivism. <laughs> don't just vote. Do something else. Like you can vote, but do something else. Don't do one thing for one day out of the entire year and say that you, you've done your part. You have not done your part. Go look something up. Go look at uh, my project in the future and find a strategy that helps you uh, obtain your goals. So if you're anti, anti-gun anti whatever, go knock on doors and ask to buy people's guns back. Do something. <laughs> Right. Very good. Yeah, I like I like that. Uh, I like that call to action. I definitely do. So, uh, where can people find uh, find your work? Uh, the, uh, so there's there's undermine dot news, and uh, is there somewhere else people can uh, people can find you? Um, you know, uh, reach out to me on uh, jdanielrichard dot com. But yeah, that's, that's about it. Okay. All right. Uh, very good. Well, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was uh, it was nice to chat with you, and uh, I, I guess uh, uh, yeah, get your background, uh, hear more about uh, what you're working on over there at, uh, at Undermine News. I'm, I'm really excited to to see what you what you do in the future with the project, man. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks for having me. Hey, not a problem. Uh, there you have it, uh, J. Daniel Richer from Undermine News at undermine.news. Uh, definitely go uh, follow his work. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the show on your favorite podcatcher, I would highly recommend you do so. Uh, I've got more content, uh, more great content uh, on the way. Just search for the Vonnie Podcast, and please do consider uh, leaving a positive review. And uh, we are on Spotify now, so if uh, you made the request uh, for the podcast to be on Spotify, well, it's, uh, it's there. Uh, lastly, check out Libertarian Attack Publications at libertarianattack.com. Uh, and uh, there's a book went up today, and a book's going to go out in a couple days as well. So definitely go there and uh, get your self liberational uh, self liberational media uh, to, to aid you in uh, aid you in, in, in your pursuit of freedom. Uh, so yeah, thanks in advance. Uh, until next time, let's build the Agora and let's build second realms. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom, of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.